court. Rush in the gun. They'll give it a hardy on a draw. Up the middle of the 15. Thank you, Kat. Uh, that music you hear is uh, because at Tovash 10 is here in the studio. Uh, first off, it's a blessing to have you back here, brother. How are you feeling? How are we doing, guys? Oh, I, I think I got what you got. <laughs> All right, so do what I had. I, I, mean, know I, I think I like optioned it off to both of y'all. Probably. And you too? So this last couple of weeks here in DFW and across Texas and across the world, yeah, well, I've been Whoa. getting around. I've been, handing, I've, been, I've been passing out this germ like uh, those dudes on the Vegas Strip when they hand you those little cards oh, yeah. to, to come see me. Yeah. Lady, lady, lady. So, you know, I was, you know, under the weather. Uh, I, I want to say it was like Wednesday, last Wednesday and Thursday, man. I'm in the bed swaddled up like a, a newborn. Oh, damn. Temperature of 101. Damn. And then, you know, all my friends, shout out to Jarvis. He was just like, bro, just like take a whole bunch of NyQuil and just like, Sleep. you know, take the fan off, take you know, turn the fan off, and then just sweat it out. And that's what I did. And so by Friday morning, I was feeling like six hundred thousand dollars, not a million bucks, but six hundred. So you turned the fan off? Did you put on the ticket? <laughs> oh, that's a good joke. Shout out to DFW Sports Radio. Ooh. Wow. This guy's on a roll. Stop him now. That's a good one. That is a real good one. But I feel good, though. Yeah. Good. Well, good. Uh, listen, let me ask you a question. Are you like the rest of Cowboys Nation and uh, Dallas? You're all excited about the game that took place on, um, uh, what was that, Saturday night, EA? You guys, yeah. you guys big Rec time? Record-breaking performance. Yeah, record-breaking performance up there Saturday night. Got every Dak Prescott looked good back on Back on track, you, you know, know set records. I thought you'd be happy that your guy broke Tony Romo's record. I'm, I, first off, I didn't even know why my guy was in the game. Didn't even know why he decided to suit up. I don't even know why he made the flight to this game. Uh, yeah, well, what about, you know, your guy, other guy, Zeke, said it pretty well. They don't want, they, they were there in 2016 and they had the bye and they didn't like how they came out. So they said, we're going to keep playing because that's mm -hmm. what we do. Because mm -hmm. that's what Warriors do, Walt. Warriors, they keep playing. Yeah. Even fight. though the other team already mailed it in. So that's, I said they weren't going to do it. That's their mentality. We, we, we uh, have a championship mentality. <laughs> now, it's funny he says that because I guarantee you had one of those guys got hurt, he would have been the one in here. He'd have been the one in here in this studio. I don't understand why they played everybody. This makes no sense. Everybody okay, well, listen, Dr. Strange, we're not in the multiverse, so no. we're not going to go there and find out. So <laughs> It's a good movie, by the way. <laughs> it is. Y'all go see it, Spider-Man. Um, go see it twice. Oops. Three so, times. okay, so the... Uh, the, the situation on Saturday. All right. So anytime you have a rival and you can just like pin their asses against the wall and just like look and laugh at them and destroy them. I'm all for it. Um, it wasn't the game to rest, Walt. No. It wasn't. <laughs> I don't think this game was the game to rest. Right. I think that the Cowboys played it just fine mm -hmm. with playing Dak and playing Zeke and, you know, playing, the, you know, the starters pretty much into the early fourth when the game was out of, you know, out of question. Um... I think that the coaching staff and Jerry Jones and Will McClay handled it just fine. Everybody came out of there feeling good. And that's what that's pretty much the goal of that game. It I was. think that this game was a let's come out of it feeling good and feeling revved up for the playoffs. And so they did just that. Almost like you know, they treated it like a preseason game, like a almost like a rehearsal game. Yeah. And they had where Dave you got in there until yeah. I don't know what the fourth quarter. Well, dude, hold on, are you upset? Okay, so are you upset with Dak? And then why don't you go talk to Pops about that? Because you know you Pops talk. Uh, what does talk? his Pops have to do with no, him no, playing on the football tell, field? You tell Pops that you don't believe your son, his son, should have got that record. Because that's what he wanted. He wanted that record. He came in that game. He was uh, what two touchdowns? He, he needed two touchdowns, so yeah. three to break it. So I mean, that, five. That's what get, that's what he needed, and he wanted that. That's what football players do. They got Zeke needed 85 yards to get 1,000 yards. Now, overall, it's not that big of a deal, but running backs like that round number of getting 1,000. Mm -hmm. And by the way, because of that, the Cowboys, for the first time in 
NFL history had a player that threw a quarterback who threw for more than 4,000, a receiver that I caught for over 1,000 yards, and a running back with 1,000 plus 10 or more sacks by a defensive uh, black, uh, defensive player and 10 or more interceptions. Mm -hmm. That's never been done in NFL history. Mm -hmm. So those are big things that the, that rev up your Dallas Cowboys going into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. But you don't understand that. So the accolades are there, but for mm -hmm. some reason, y'all, it seems like Walt is kind of disappointed. Yeah, I mean, kind of, kind of thought maybe halftime if we were gonna play, everybody should have sat down. Thought we could have seen some rush hour. We did. We got in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that was like how many minutes was left in that game when they did that one? Like oh. nine. Yeah, yeah, but they got. In the fourth. No, listen. To be honest, Dak didn't play a lot of those. The defense was uh, on there a lot. They mm -hmm. kept they kept them upright. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, the Clement guy got in the game. The Smith guy got into the game. Mm -hmm. Um, 80, Good storylines. Eighty six did all right. Mm -hmm. And by the way, eighty six. I'm, I'm 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 so proud of you, Dalton Schultz. T E one is what we call him. Uh, yeah, that you know, like, I mean, you were not supposed to be the guy, but you persevered. So kudos to you, and I hope you you know get the contract the, by the Eagles. Pretty much you deserve, either here, hopefully, or elsewhere. Oh, he ain't gonna get a contract here. Um, 89, sorry, you know, about the injuries, but he came know, a lot, like, you know, but he came back and played very well. He did. Uh, and he would have had that touchdown if it was placed just a little bit right. Uh, they, they pretty much had that. So good in Blake Jarwin, again, you get your better blocker. Now they're both not great blockers, but the better blockers back now. So that might help your game going into against the San Francisco 49ers. You know, I do think that 80, 86 Dalton Schultz can block just a tad bit. A lot of people say that he can't. But every time I see a Cowboys run, you know, like on a replay, I'm seeing 86 just seal somebody on the outside, making allowing the running back, whoever it is. He does, but then, but he also has moments where maybe maybe he's better in run blocking because in his pass protection he gets whiffed, he gets destroyed. We we already brought up that one that was that one touchdown Zeke would have had if Schultz just actually. Oh yeah, yeah, on on, on the uh, on, in the flat. Yeah, so or, I, I, and then yeah. there was another one where he was uh, in the fullback position, and the the, the edge rusher, I think it was Ch in the Arizona game, Chandler Jones was bearing down on him, and he was like, Ugh, and yeah. He, well, so I mean, sometimes you will come to a dude that can and will whoop your ass. No, like, the, I mean, Chandler Jones will do that. Yeah. So I mean, I'm not really too concerned about that part. If we're going forward, like like I just need my running backs going this way. Yes. And so I'm not really concerned about that part. I am, I mean, I am optimistic about Sunday, like I was telling y'all in the break. And so I'm just glad that, you know, for one protocol is over, you know, the majority of those dudes are off of uh, COVID protocol. And well, then two, we got a game on Sunday. Well, let me ask you this because Walt. At you know, AT&T Stadium. AT&T. Walt, Walt does his thing. Which will be, he, which will be uh, at uh, knockouts in Louisville for so y'all doing that thing in Louisville. Bro, I'm still trying to get out there, but y'all, oh. Well, well, hold on. Oh, wait, that's well, next week. Though. Well, hold on now. Because when the Cowboys win. There you go. And the Cowboys well, win. We'll be right back. We'll be in We'll be right back. We'll be right back in knockouts. We'll be on the road. Yeah. Tom Brady. And we'll be on the road. And so you can. I'm nervous, but okay. But now here's my thing, and I'm this is more an attack on Walt. Uh, yeah, huh, wanted, of course. Now, do you think it was wrong for a guy like I'm the one who said, "Hey, remember, play it out," because you still have when you still have shots to move up and oh. you're seated. And I said it could happen, and it did. The Cowboys won, and then guess what? The unthinkable happened. Both the Rams and the Cardinals both lost, allowing the Cowboys to face the 49ers. Now, is that wrong to root for that? I think it played out just fine. Um, no, so I mean, you, feel free to root for it. The Cowboys got the better matchup because they got the lesser of the evils in terms of quarterbacks. Thank you. And that's, that's all. I mean, even though that quarterback has been to the Super Bowl, cool, fine. Yeah, Andy, but comparatively, comparatively, he's the weakest of the three. But he is the weakest going into, to, you know, this week's how game. Many, how many games they the, the streak they've been on? Uh, the 49ers? Yeah, yeah, I didn't see what didn't they, they Weren't they on a, a well, nice they, they were, I want to say, either 9-2 and and 7-2. They were seven two in the last nine games, and the Cowboys yeah, were they, like they were eight, like they three. were three. They they started the season three and five, and then they switched up things. And listen, going to this game, I'm telling you right now, I'm not saying that the the Niners. It sounds team, like you basically said Jimmy Garoppolo is just. You know, I, this I'm, is gonna I have, be, listen. It sounds like you said it's going to be a cakewalk. I'm not. I'm saying Jimmy Garoppolo mm -hmm. of the three teams, mm -hmm. he's the weakest quarterback, and that's what you want because the, guess what? In the playoffs, your quarterbacks have to step up and play. And of the three, Jimmy Garoppolo will give you turnovers, and he's a statue. Mm. So I'm okay with that, but make no well, mistake. Well, what happened that year he went to the Super Bowl? Was he a statue that year? They had one of the best defenses in the league. Oh. 
And now, by the way, they still probably have one of the best defenses in the league right now playing. They made some changes. They moved Eric Armstrong into that. And Debo Samuel's been going off. Now, remember earlier I asked you who's getting who? How does Debo Samuel get the football? Yeah. Throws to him. Oh, and who, but, and who throws to him? Jimmy Garoppolo. Okay. But it's not like Jimmy Garoppolo uh, is sitting there like making yeah, pristine they're, passes. They're scheming to get yeah. uh, Debo at uh, nineteen. Yeah, they're they're scheming to get nineteen open. Okay. Uh, fact check me on, still, on, on still over. 15, I think he's 15. 15 or 19. Yeah. You still got to get him the ball. But no, they're, they're scheming to get this dude open because they uh, they know he's a dangerous weapon. Right. Right. And I think that, you know, like, um, because I like the, I, I like the, you know, I like the guy. And I do think that he's a, a valuable weapon going into this game. Very. Uh, especially because he's physical. He's baby. Is your, is your guy going to be guarding him? He, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I hope I'm not. Sure, I'm sure he would step up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Diggs or Which one? Diggs. Anthony Brown. Brown? No. Yeah. I don't think Brown Diggs, will go Diggs will, but I, that's what worries me. Because here's the thing. You got oh, this. Well, it was only a matter of time for you worried about something. Well, Michael Irvin was worried about something, and you don't. I don't. Uh, you're not Michael Irvin. Don't put yourself, don't uh, you put yourself in the same sentence. Listen, what, what you got here is this. You got the ultimate risk-reward opportunity here. Mm -hmm. Because Jimmy Grapple will throw you things. Mm -hmm. he, he's that. He's not that great of a quarterback. He's dealing with a thumb injury still. So you put pressure in mm -hmm. on him. He will throw you some. But you got a guy like Debo Samuel who runs some of the best routes you'll ever see. The guy's almost unguardable, especially after the catch. So you get Trayvon Diggs who gives up a lot of big yards. If Trayvon better make the play then, because if he doesn't, Debo. Well, Samuel we know he ain't off. tackling him. <laughs> well, you know what? I uh, think that we kind of are forgetting. That's a good instrumental cat. <laughs> I think that we're um, forgetting that. Um, Trey Diggs will stand up to a challenge. He will, but that, that, again, he still gets beat. I, I'm starting to sound like Anthony Fauci over here. Um, no, listen. I, the, the problem with Trayvon Diggs is is, is I don't that think Anthony Fauci deserved that one. But go ahead. You know, I shoot at Fauci like that. <laughs> I'm not. He's, that's he what he sounds like. You want a shot? It's all rap. No, I'm good. No, what Tra Trayvon Diggs' problem is is that he constantly makes these gambles. Which is great. That's why he has over 10 picks. He has 11 picks on the season. But the problem is, with a guy like Debo Samuel, I hope he doesn't try to gamble too much because Debo will hurt you. And our our secondary, that's our weakness right now. It is our secondary. It's still our... I don't think they're that bad, though. They're not bad. But a guy like Debo Samuel will kill you. And I, that's what worries me about Trayvon Diggs going against him. So the biggest matchup for me is our pass rush. If our pass rush can get to Jimmy Garoppolo, it doesn't matter about D. Bill Samuel because Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be on his ass the whole time. Also, the, but the biggest thing, it doesn't matter about the passing game. It's about the, the 49ers' biggest strength is running the football. Well, mm -hmm. it's running the football. And guess what? That's the Cowboys' defense's biggest weakness. Mm. Even with Micah Parsons there, they get gashed. They get gashed a lot. And you saw it against the Eagles. Micah Parsons was there, and their JV, their JV squad was gashing them up the middle. That's a problem. That's a big problem. And guess what? Are you, talking about, are you talking about uh, the Last game week. Saturday? Last yeah, week. the Saturday game. Okay. But no. Well, first off, the, no. first off, the Dallas Cowboys didn't have all their people. But not. It's not like it mattered. Uh, I, it's I, not I, like it mattered. Okay, but outside of Micah Parsons and Trayvon Diggs, and I believe that was about it. Because he, what, who else? No, on that? defense. I'm talking about yeah, on defense. I'm talking about right on defense. Right yeah, they played their starters aside from Curse Micah wasn't Parsons, there. Michael Curse and Trayvon Diggs. I think. Okay. That was it. Every, you still had Randy, you still had Demarcus Lawrence, you still had your main guys on defense, and they were getting gashed by the JV running backs by the by you the can't Eagles. Take this and in the San Francisco 49ers, they love to use misdirection. They used to love counters. They are the one of the best. Kyle Shannon loves to use misdirection, especially mm -hmm. in the run game. And guess what? They brought back Trent Williams. He's be he was, he's healthy for this game. Their offensive line is set. That's a big worry going into this game. Again, you don't you don't consider it because you think the Cowboys are invincible. And that's no, I just didn't take anything that happened Saturday serious. Nothing. This has been a problem if you've been paying attention. Your biggest glare and weakness with your defense has been the whoa, 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 whoa. You know, my my side of the ball is the offense. That's where my weakness is. Okay, at. but your guy DQ, he had, he'd been neglecting that that area. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. So. 
I'm just saying. I'm just trying to figure I'm out what angle out, you're going. I'm I'm just wanna, I just want to know what angle you're trying to take here. I'm just saying. I'm pointing out for our, our esteemed audience out there because that's what we do. Oh, we, esteemed. Yeah, esteemed audience out there. Well, it sounds the like camera. you're trying to put down the in defense the that's world, been doing their job. I'm not. It I'm saying like, they have a weakness. Well, been, they have and, a weakness. It, and, and fortunately, you're going against the Niners. But you, but, but you compared it to a game that didn't matter. That, I use that as an example. That was a terrible example. Okay, fine. You want me to go back in the which game? Kansas City? where they just gashed That's a better one. That's a better one. Kansas City. There you go. Okay, so all right. So Saturday, maybe, Saturday should be stricken from the record. Books. Okay, fine. I, I, okay, I just fine. want to go. Sorry, but maybe they did look at the Kansas City tape. There you go. You know, um, and then that's my that's my scariest weapon is the coordinator, uh, because he's kind of familiar with, you know, how things work down here. Uh, he, he, he's a Shanahan, right? Um, and he's a little bit smart when it comes to. The S word scheme. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's his thing. That's what he does, y'all. Like he schemes. Right. He schemes well. Okay, so you may see their tackle line up on the right side, and then all of a sudden, when the quarterback goes hut, that tackle might come all the way across mm -hmm. and be like wind up on the left side, and then the left tackle ends up going inside, and all of a sudden, now you got these cornerbacks chasing these big ass left tackles. And then there's a, there's a physical dude with the ball, you know, yeah. pretty pretty much with a convoy in front of him. Like, oh shit, what do we do? Or even that's then, the scary part. Well, they'll do misdirection from this side to this side, and everyone's confused. The linebackers are going there, the linebackers are going there, and guess what? The, the fullback just takes it up the middle because they've tricked us. I, I, I've seen a lot of, and you know, uh, I listen to Brian Broaddus. He's pretty much a genius. You might hear him on one of five three to fan, uh, EA and them's competitor. <laughs> um, but what brought us, you know, pretty much will lead into <coughs> is he watches a lot of line play, offensive line. Play. Yeah. And with a Shannon hand, with a Shannon hand like that, uh, pretty much, um, doing his schemes, you know, his scheme stuff. So if you get, if you get your lineman kicking out, pulling right, pulling left, doing stuff that you've never seen the Cowboys do all mm -hmm. season. Then we got problems. I'm just letting y'all know. Um, and that's the scary part because I do not want to see a, le a right tackle and a right guard like doing stuff that you see on like Tech Mobile. Yeah. I don't want to see those dudes doing abnormal stuff. I want to see those dudes pretty much trying to stand in to protect because they got problems, you know, dealing with 94, 90, 11, mm -hmm. and guys like that. And then it, let's say their run game gets successful. That opens up the play action. And then and they, that's when Debo Samuels kills you deep because, well, he might be their best running back too as well, but he is a one hell of a – this guy is probably the best offensive weapon in football right now. Uh, nobody talks about him enough, but he, they should. Debo Samuels is – Arguably, I, I think he's better than Cooper Cup. If you, we could say that, the that's scary. That, no, no, that's some scary shit. You, because yeah. you, you said Cooper Cup, who's yeah, probably be like number two uh, yeah. receiver in the game right now. Yeah, um, Debo Samuel. Because you know the problem is they don't utilize Debo Samuel as much as they would as a receiver. Because again, Jim Grapple's not they really a thrower. Don't. He's a they he's, to the shit out of him. They like they they, they basically make. Debo Samuels, Tio, and Dez, and, you know, and, and, and to one receiver. They, they, they try to make him as physical as possible. Now, it flips out, flip, flip, flips out of the ball. Now you want this, you know what you describe, what you want the offense that you think the Niners <coughs> offensive line might do? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we hope the Cowboys offensive line does because they have the bigger challenge because they're going against a defensive line that is just rabid. They're going to come after you. I read a good article today that there are like four um, uh, pit bulls on the, on the defensive line mm. that they're just ready to come attack you. And and you have Cat got four pit bulls. Yeah, uh, did you not know no, no, Anakin? But, 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 That's yeah, one of them. Yeah, but He's Anakin is like sleep as shit though. You know what I'm saying? Well, hopefully, I see. I hope there are four Anakins out there. But if I had a hot dog or something, he'd be like, give me well, the hot dog. Well, Dak is going to be the hot dog for Anakin in the Sniners game, and he's going to go after him. Uh, Nick Bosa, we already know what he does, but Eric Armstead, nobody talks about him. They moved him to the interior. They moved in the interior this year after their defensive line had a lot of injuries, and that worked like a charm. Because now he's pretty much brutalizing guards. And guess who he must like is going to go against? Uh, wait, wait, brutalizing uh, guards? Connor Williams. Guards. Okay, so, oh. That's the problem. So, okay. Connor Williams, and hopefully maybe they're going to have to switch it up. I don't know if they're going to move it around. But, like, Connor Williams is going to have to go against Eric Armstead. And then you got uh, Terrence Steele going against Nick Bosa. So, all right. So, okay, so. Those, Not Terrence Steele, sorry. Lyle Collins. Those of you scoring at home. On Sunday, this is going to be a physical, a physical contest. Yes. So the San Francisco 49ers are a physical bunch. 
Uh, we may not be familiar with them here because they play out west. Mm -hmm. You guys pretty much don't watch that. Mm -mm. Um, if you're not watching, you know, like direct TV or, you know, stuff like that, you're not going to really see the 49ers because, I mean, if you think about it, Fox doesn't like them, CBS doesn't like them, NBC doesn't like them. They're a boring team with pretty much no name. They're not really that sexy. But I'm fearful because that team is grimy. That's the term. They're thugs, okay? So understand this. The Cowboys are a finesse team. They, they, they're, they're finesse. You know, they're all pretty and everything. They're mm -hmm. fast, you know. But you really don't say, hey, they're physical. Because I don't categorize this Cowboys team being physical. Not Maybe their defense could be sometimes. You know, in, in, in 17 games, we did see a little bit of physicality. Well, that's but, funny you mentioned that because they did mention in that article while I, they mentioned how the, the Niners defense is very forceful and powerful and they're just trying to get at you. The the, the Cowboys defense isn't a t powerful bunch. They're mm -hmm. a speed bunch. They use their speed right. to get there. They're very they finesse. There, yeah. And so, again, Michael Parsons, he's not a very strengthful guy. You know all that? He's finesse. He s uses his speed more than anything. Mm -hmm. And so that's the thing. We are a finesse team. We're a very finesse team. We make what, what do the Cowboys look at your defense? The defense gives up a lot of yards, but what do they do? Pick, Take it away. Turn Pick, over turnovers. stuff like that. That's the difference. So you're going to you're you're taking a, a Cowboys team that's very finesse going against a very grimy team. And that's the problem why a lot of people are scared about this matchup is because the Niners can suck you in. But I'll give I you love the, that feeling. But get yeah, about whoa. Football. Pause. <laughs> Back to you. Anyway. Yeah, you okay, doing? let me switch to the good news. Switch. Good news. Okay. Switch <laughs> positions. All right. Get on top. Where the hell is this we get on going? top. We're getting on top right now. Okay. Get on top of you. All right. So the good news is if the cow, the, this secondary of the Niners is pretty weak. <laughs> and so if the Cowboys get some time, Dak Prescott, if he's back to normal, we hope he is. Well, I mean, you, you should know. We, I mean, you, you, we figured it out in week 17 <coughs> or 18 or whatever no. against the Eagles, so he's back. We now. didn't figure out it was against the JV team. But regardless, if they get back to what they normally should be doing, wins a win, yeah. Dak, Dak Prescott and then, you know, should be able to attack downfield. If you can attack downfield, guys like Cedric Wilson is going to be a huge X factor mm. in this game because they're going to most likely they're going to double CD. They're going to probably double Marty. Well, how are you going to double both? I was just going to double both. That just leaves Cedric and adult. Then, so over. basically goes on. They could have to go zone. Well, I'm just yeah. trying to figure out what type of mindset Mark Cooper is going to be in since it, he got a uh, fine today, 14K for attending a sports event without a mask. You don't uh, care. Which game was this? The Alabama shit? No, the no, uh, uh, Mavs Warriors game uh, where he was front <laughs> dirt, row. Dirt oh, game. The dirt game. The dirt game where apparently he was spotted without a mask oh, on at a sporting event. he's not vaccinated. Right. Right. My God! If you get caught, well, out. well you gotta pay for it. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. He already had it and got over it. So basically, doesn't he have yeah, the, 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 but the protocol is still in place. Protocol, I know protocol. I'm just saying, but he has the antibodies. Yeah, so. yeah. So he's not sick, right? No, right. I don't matter. You, you, okay, here's the thing. Well, Gross, if you think it's a messed up role, his union agreed to it. I know, I'm, so, I'm not. I'm just saying. I wonder what his mindset is going to be. You know, I mean, so, you got to pay for it. Listen, if, if you don't want to get Amari, stuck, then Amari, you got to pay listen, for it. We listen because I know you hate Amari. I don't have a problem with Amari Cooper. Even though you, you look just like him. Oh my God, I do not look like Amari Cooper. Bro, that's Amari Cooper right <laughs> No, it's not. Like, you, you're just a little thicker in the face than him. He's a very skinny face. Yeah, okay. Well, so. good. We'll, we'll stick with that. <laughs> I don't have a problem with Amari Cooper. I like Amari Cooper. No, but you, you always find some way to attack him. I mean, if he does something wrong, well, I guarantee I mean, you're upset with me for coming after Kellen Moore. Can't do a side well, by side with Walter and Amari Cooper. Yeah, we need to have that done. This is ridiculous. <laughs> right, right here on Dallas. This on is ridiculous. <laughs> you, look, you, you, look, you look like Amari Cooper, like you in his like like maybe late in his late forties. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. <laughs> Thank you. Why y'all in the forties? Yeah. Though? I'm only 33. I'll no, be 34 to go. Amari's weeks. younger and Mari's face is really and, small. I mean, they, they, bro, they look alike. They got they the do. same haircut. If you took the everything. glasses off, you would be a Mari. Yeah. We'd be like, oh, Mari, you're in. <laughs> this is like TNT. You know how they do Charles Barkley? Yeah. <laughs> like, do like a side by side. <laughs> 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 bro, you look like him, bro. Like, uh, okay. Wait but regardless, oh, I think Amari slash you, I think you're going to have a great game. Don't do that. You know, but because Amari focuses on the game, he always has been. Now, if you don't get him the football, he might start to pout. But oh, he'll check himself out the game if you he don't won't get him the football. Check himself out. But oh, he, well, he did that in the Eagles game uh, that one year. Remember that couldn't get him the football. He mm -hmm. said, "I'm with this. I'm out of here." I think that was a 
That was when Garrett was coaching. So yeah, it was. It was like week seven. It was like week seventeen or eighteen. He was like, "Oh, I'm not getting the ball. Yeah, forget this." I'm so, Paul, let me ask you this: Do you think uh, and be give a real good? Uh, don't be like, "Oh, Cowboys," you know, because I'm wearing the shirt now. I'm calling about the Cowboys. What's your honest opinion on the Cowboys? Do they have a shot? Do they have a shot too? I mean, we're, I mean, I'm probably gonna reveal that uh, in the preview. But you know, there there are some things that I'm uh, worried. About with you the, should be with there the Cowboys going into going into uh, uh, with my side of the ball. You know, I don't. I'm seeing a lot of distractions. I'm seeing a lot of distractions. I'm not seeing a lot. We have, of, it. We have it right. Are we about to have it? We're can't alive. really. Can't, can't. Really, is this necessary? So, yeah. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> <laughs> nothing alike. That's, look at Walt. Nothing alike. Look we look Walt nothing left. alike. Walt's we on look, the left, y'all. We look nothing alike. Which one is Walt? <laughs> 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 we look yeah, nothing yeah. alike. I look, actually look pretty handsome in that uh, <laughs> picture with that white basically, cowboy polo. Basically, if you shaved, you'd be Amari Cooper's <laughs> doppelganger. What's wrong with being Amari Cooper? He's a handsome man. Oh, my God. So, you guys are ridiculous. So what are, what are your things that you're quote unquote worried about? <laughs> well, I've already told you what I'm worried about. What? One one where, where's the focus of the offensive coordinator right now? Oh where's his mind at? What is his what is he got going on right it's now? Is, it, is he gonna be ready for Sunday? It's a good, it's a good question. No, because you know what he's doing is because Oh, he, oh, oh, you see that? Oh. No, because he's doing this whole thing. We talked about the whole opening segment because he thinks that uh, Kellen Moore because took he took that one interview with Where's his mind frame it? the Eagles week. And now he's saying that oh, he's taking interviews during the playoffs, which he isn't. And Dan Quinn is doing the same thing. It's the same thing with Dan Quinn. They're both listed as possible candidates. With multiple head coaching jobs, so he thinks that I've heard Dan Quinn come out and say, "I'm not worried about that right now." But otherwise, I got Howdy Doody over here, oh you God. know, taking all types of interviews. I, I don't know, and, and having skill. Oh my, my, my all attorney, I know is, my, uh, all I know my is, agent handles that. But yeah, he's he's finding time to do interviews. I'm not so. trying to defend him. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you defend him. That you find you find this the, type of behavior they acceptable. Have, they still have the number one offense for nothing. So I'm just saying. Well, I'm saying you find this type of behavior acceptable. You find this behavior. No, That's I why you think, want to defend it. I just find it funny that you're not attacking Dan Quinn. For, because, Dan, listen, Dan Quinn has they're done. They're doing the same thing. Dan Quinn has done this. Thing. We understood what Dan Quinn was coming here coming here to do. We uh-huh. knew that this was going to be a one-year, one-off deal. Oh, this no. Kellen Moore guy has been here for a while. So? Yeah, so, you know, now he wants to go down there. Now, I want to let you know something, <laughs> EA. Uh, you go over there. The grass ain't green on the other side. Don't think you can come back here and try to get back on with us because we're not taking you. All right, so other the than, job will be filled. Okay, that's okay. fine. Other than that, let's talk about the actual game. What that is mean? the actual game because I need to know, make sure that he's ready to go. I need to make be. sure that he's been in the lab. He will be. Getting the, you can vouch for him. Yeah. You can vouch for him. I talked. At, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what would you guys talk to him over there on 1310 the ticket? Is that what you talk to him, man? No, we don't talk to him, though. We oh, yeah. Well, we know because you guys don't even talk to the real Jerry over there. But that's another story for another day. Mm. I just want to know where is my coordinator's head at? Is God. he going to be focused and worried about his interview coming up Monday? Or is he going to be focused on Sunday afternoon? All what right, is so, he going to be focused on? All right. So, again, we're not going into game picks yet. But, Tovash, you're just your gut instinct right now over this game. Um, I think it's going to be a nasty game. Like 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 like, like nasty. old school old school yeah, throwback because it's gonna feel like you know one of those boxing matches that's just straight out boring you know damn um and I I mean I think the Cowboys been winning ugly all year right because yeah. you know those of you at home like the style point games the style point wins uh y'all go well uh we didn't see forty nine put up so you know this offense sucks. <laughs> and then you know they're the number one offense in the league for you know for a reason, but but a lot of y'all like to style point you know cowboy games, and they sometimes they win ugly. With that being said, uh, I think that you know San Francisco plays a nasty game. The Cowboys play a nasty game, but it's also possible that the Cowboys can pull this game off. You know you know a turnover you know either way can you know make it work. You know what this game reminds but, me of. I think it could be. Remember that 2014 Seattle game? Like Which the Cowboys and went on the road to Seattle. Is that when we won? The, the, we Ter- won. the Terrence Williams yeah, started 19. The toe, the, the, the toe grab. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we, we're going to get something like that. I think we're going to have that kind of game. I don't know what, what's going to happen. I'm not going to give out my prediction yet. But I'm saying is that that that's the feel I'm getting. This is a big game. You, you, you got a lot of antsy people. And for Dak, this is big because he needs to. This is the first playoff game post-contract. So he, he needs to prove it. He needs to win that playoff game. That's what it's all about, apparently. That's what I was told during the Tony Romo days. It was all about playoff uh, no, games. No, don't do this. Don't do this. Yeah, no, because, the, you know, like, it, it's, it's – But it's true. It's yeah. about 
Playoff because Romo, Romo was uh, unfairly depicted because, like, a lot of people were like, well, he needs to win December games. Right. It wasn't on the coach. It was on the player for right. some reason. Right, I understand that. But, and again, now that's, it's like what, that's what coaching. he's going to be, but it still hasn't changed. That process can be judged what he does in the postseason. And so, I don't think so. I think it, it, nothing's changed. That's how we judge quarterbacks in this league. I don't like it, but that's what it is. And so Dak Prescott's going to have to. But this is a big game. I don't think Dak's going to. I don't think Dak's going to get too much hate if they lose. Dak may be coddled a little bit. Now it depends. It depends on now. It depends on how Dak performs. Right now, yeah. If Dak comes out, what he's been doing in the in in those games like Washington and in New York and in New Orleans game, if he comes out like that, then uh, I hope not. Then we'd lose. I mean, because I, I mean, you you hit him once. For some reason, I think that you know, like he'll he'll gear it up when it's time to gear it up. Um, this ain't the game, you know, you to lay up to lay an egg and be you, flat. You, you weren't here last week when we started hashtag throw that thing up. That's what we want to do. That's all I want to do. It's just hash when you see when you look downfield, Dak. Hashtag throw that thing up. Uh, I, really, I really do see that too. I, I see it happening a lot. I do, days. and just I like also fucking, just like you know go between the. Like just go downfield. Just like really just do go downfield. I will say this to Kellen. Please, just if the run game's not there, just ignore it. Yeah, but yeah, ignore know, it, ignore it like you should ignore those interviews. Just ignore it. Ignore it like you should ignore the interviews. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what that means with Walton Kellen, Kellen Moore. Yeah, I'm done with this guy. Or... This guy less is more with this guy. I'm well, out. I'm done. What, Kellen, so you you you, you talking to do that sitting in the middle over there? Yeah, don't um, worry. No, I'm talking about this. That Listen, you, you can't do you don't do that. Not not in the middle. Now, if it was any if Cal, if it wasn't playoff time. Wait, wait, more Kellen Moore? Yeah. <laughs> Kellen Moore, if it wasn't if it wasn't playoffs time, I'm okay with it. But it's playoffs. Cowboys haven't been you the do, Super Bowl. But you do know that that's like the only time he's going to be able to interview. Okay. No, that's there'll be work. other there. You do know that they the, the, these other the jobs would be filling up. They don't have okay, time well, for you to, okay. Has anybody been hired yet? Huh? Well, Has anybody been hired yet? Still being fired. Okay. 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 They well, exactly. They are. They've been uh, fired. They've been fired. They can't right? be hired because the majority of them are in the playoffs. Exactly. Exactly. They're getting so, interviewed though. Right. So, so you want to interview little Measley Jacksonville? Trust me, ain't that job probably won't even be filled by the time well, the playoffs is over. With. Like, Nobody wants that job. But Kellen Moore. I, I I think we're gonna have. I think we're gonna have a great. I want to say to the fans though, please show up and just be out. And Vosh will be there to watch. You oh guys. yeah, Vosh. I need you to get that. I know, I know, I'm good. I know. I'm gonna look up on the TV over there at uh, Knockouts, and it's gonna be like it was when I was over there last time. I looked at that stadium on the day after Christmas, and I saw nothing but cowboy over there. That's what I want to see. I want to see Sunday. white. I want to see white, white, white. I think white. it will be a lot of white. Um, I'll have my white cowboys up. You just see him right there in the picture, right? I have my white cowboys polo ready to go. Well, okay, so can I? Can I like? Not, not like really rant, but just no, like you do it. Yeah, go ahead. Do spaces, it. It's your like, show too, man. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense when y'all go, you know, like don't sell your tickets to 49er fans. What the fuck does that mean? Okay, so now you couldn't, now you couldn't, uh, couldn't take food out of toe wash's mouth now. Okay, so, no, no. So okay, so cat, where's the cat? Is it? Yeah, just okay. get it on. Yeah, so it. y'all don't understand how ticket sales work. <laughs> ticket sales work because everything is digital now. So what people do is they list their tickets on like StubHub, SeatGeek. Not a sponsor here, Ticketmaster, mm-hmm. all those guys, right? So what we do, because I also have a season ticket too, what we do is we list our ticket at an astronomical price because we want to make money, right? So a ticket goes for one hundred eleven dollars to a, you know a regular season ticket holder, and then they mark it up to four hundred. Then take out lasses to see Geek StubHub, uh, Ticketmaster. If you're a Cowboy fan. It, buy the fucking ticket okay and then what happens is you take your ass to the game well they priced us out okay cool so the person that's wearing a red jersey that came from like uh um give me give me a city in that state okay uh sacramento sacramento california and you're a Fort Niners fan somebody from sacramento california goes you know what I'll pay for it. I'll buy a four hundred dollars seat that Vi sold me. I will get my dumb ass on a plane. I will grab my red shirt, and then I will go stay at the uh, you know the, the hotel, whatever. I will spend twelve hundred bucks, and I will sit my ass down and cheer for four hours. Yeah. Cowboy fans go. I live in Mesquite, and I can't afford it, but I can also afford my wife's big boobs. Though I can do that. Yep. Yep. Uh, I you love heard. the Cowboys, but I I, 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 can, I can go buy eight bottles of uh, Maker's Mark. I Thank can go you. do that Thank shit. Yep. 
Y'all got too many excuses. Your, priority, your priorities are mixed like, up. No, seriously, though. Y'all have way too many excuses for me, Cowboy fans. Too many excuses. Uh, if, if you live in Florida, you're a Cowboy fan, bring your ass to Arlington. Right. If you live it's a long in, drive. If you, if you live in New Orleans, if you live in Alexandria, if you live in Treeport, I don't give a damn if you live in uh, uh, Arkansas, wherever. San Francisco you, yourself. If you just stay next to the Taj fucking Hall, bring your ass to the game, bro, and don't complain when... You're sitting next to a Niners fan because that Niners fan bought the tickets. You should be uh, pretty much more mad at more Cowboy fans because we're in Arlington. We're we're in DFW. Last time I counted, and I really didn't count, but the last time I counted, it was 8 million people here. at and Stadium holds 90,000 people. You can't tell me you, like you cannot tell me that the Cowboy fans in just DFW alone cannot go buy tickets. I don't give a fuck how much they cost. You cannot tell me that y'all cannot buy the tickets and people, sit y'all as a playoff from, game. People from other states are finding tickets to come. Bro, y'all got too many excuses for me, Cowboy fans. I know, I, I'm sorry. I, Shots fired. I'll say this. I agree with the, the fact that because somebody's willing to always pay. No, no matter too what, many excuses, they're always, there's like, oh, it's a school night. Oh, my gosh. Uh, but my I leg say, hurts. Hey, but, no excuses. Monday is Martin Luther King Day. Everybody's off working out exactly. of school. I don't know what that is, but you know, I will, like I will only counter one thing. I only counter one thing. The only thing is, that I'm not talking about the other games. I'm talking about just the Cowboys. It, it really is too damn expensive, though. It, it, man, fuck that, no, bro. But, but I can't afford any. Yeah, you, yeah, you can. Oh, please. Yeah, you can. You uh, just drop money on a brand new car. You can afford to go to AT&T Stadium. That's that's oh, oh, that's different. Huh? No, but no, my if you, you got to save money all season, all, like seriously. Okay, so seriously. some people do. Let's be adults for a second. Uh, I, bust to my, I bust my ass. I got a job. Then I got like several other jobs, right? Yeah. So I, I am in these streets. Vosh is in these streets. Big the reason why you see me everywhere because I just like work and I, I like go do shit. I ain't got no wife telling me, you yeah, no. I ain't got no mama telling me, no. I ain't got no kid telling me, no. Well, you're so kids in college. Basically, man. I'm a grown ass man. You're a grown ass fan. So get y'all ass out right. to wherever y'all want to go. But if you don't want to go to the game, say that. Say you're taking to a 49ers fan. It'd be awesome. No, no. And again, I, I'm not one to say that. Just I'm complaining. Get somewhere. I'm not complaining God. about the whole, oh, you sell it to a Niners fan. That's stupid. I think that's just the market. And that's what happens. If you're not willing to go, the Niners fan was willing to come here. By the way, the whole thing's well over things because John Rashoda posted a pic from like, 2011 or something that wasn't even the true thing Niners fans are not traveling this far she is. On a, no they're not they're not they're you're not crazy they're okay. not you're crazy they're not you're cr I'm telling I've you seen, I've seen Niners fans no, on Twitter you, no I, there might be 20% but not the that picture okay. that yeah 20% they, they, they one picture that they showed yeah. okay so Where that was, was the like, first time Niners fans had been here yeah so, so that's why they, they, they migrated see the, you know right. they come to see so, Jerry in the hall so, so real, I, I don't think it's going to be that bad real quick I had put a a, a question out on um, Facebook and Twitter Real quick, we got some responses. Real quick, I said, yeah. "Where's Kellen's more head at?" Uh, oh my God! Where's Kellen's more head? Is it on interviews or is it on Sunday's matchup against the 49ers? Miss Carolina Teague is waiting. Yeah. She said it's oh. on Sunday. She waiting? She said yeah. on Sunday. Is she watching? Hey, Carolina. Yeah. You tell her oh, hi. I, I just wait. Sorry. She says. <laughs> she, she also says yes. I believe so. Everybody wants a ring. Maybe interviews are in the back of his mind, but game up first. And then Krizadi, as your good friend Krizadi says, Sunday. But in the back of his oh, mind, Ace. He, hey, Ace. but in the back of his mind, he's thinking of interviews as well. Yeah, so I don't know about that, Ash. I don't think he's. I think he's focused on the game because that's his job. If he <laughs> sucked it up, then he's not going to get any interviews. Killing more? Yeah, man. I don't think he's going to go there right I, now. No, like I'm saying, like listen, not right now, not right now. Too young, too young. young. Too young. Third, third year young. coordinating. Too young. All I gotta say is this. If he get off Kellen Moore. If he messes this get up. Get off Kellen Moore. If he messes this get up. Get off Kellen Moore. If he messes this up. At, he listen, bet, listen. I'm fine with you going after Kellen Moore, but you got to do equal time Listen, let me tell you something. We already know Dan Quinn. It was already known Dan Quinn was leaving the day he came, the day he See, started he here. Up his story. Here's the thing. He up his story. Here's the thing. He used to be all about, oh, Dan Quinn ain't leaving, all that. Now he switched up his story. Here's the thing. Let's see what you do. Here's the thing I now. Know. Kellen Moore better pitch a perfect game on Sunday because Jerry and DQ better not or what? DQ is already like you. You've been saying it. He's already on his way out Every the door. Time, listen, I'm going to tell you right now. From here on till the end of time, every time you open up about Kellen Moore, I got DQ's uh, right up right next to you, right okay. there. That's why you, you talk about that. Kellen Moore has more of attachment to the Dallas Cowboys oh. than DQ because he's been here long. So. He's been the court. Yo, he was handpicked hey, by Jerry. I want to tell you right now. He was handpicked by Jerry listen, to be Jason listen. Garrett's successor. They signed this guy. Get, they get, bought this guy. They treat over, him like listen, he's Jason Garrett. Listen, get over this whole, oh, he's part of the franchise. Man, everybody's looking out for number one. 
Okay. okay. Well, and I have no problem with that. But right now, number one is the Dallas Cowboys win the Super Bowl. EA, you don't remember. We ain't told us. We remember. I remember. We remember what it was like. You don't remember. We the remember first one. what it was like. I know you don't remember the first one. We remember what it was like to be, have to be uh, have the Super Bowl here. Okay. We remember what it was like. I do too. You don't. Okay? I do. We want it back. I remember We're right here on the TV. We're right here. We're right here. We're right there. And I'll be damned if I'm gonna lose it because some smarty arty guy is going to take an interview to Jacksonville instead of focusing on the damn football yeah, it's funny. game. He took it Saturday before I that don't game. give a damn what they put up. They put up 51. Well, you know what? You know, it's funny. That 50 they put, points they put up. They put up 51 the night after wow. he did an interview. Wow. So maybe the interviews work. Maybe that's a good luck Against Sean. the Philadelphia I don't Eagles know. in week seven. Hey, what do we got next? Because you're just wasting people's time. Yeah, you are. You are too. Than, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You should be more. You want, you want, um, Easy path to the championship, and now you want to give, want to let Kellen Moore off on a, uh, just let him skip on out of here. That's fine. That's fine. I, I don't have to deal with that. Well, it gets worse, EA, because now we got to talk about something that's on Tobias's shirt mm. over there, and that's the Mavericks, because last night they got embarrassed in uh, up in the Madison was, Square Garden. Was Luca? Did he? Yeah, your guy played. Was he? Oh. Yeah. Doris Burke, Car Doris, Doris Burke said something that was very interesting. We had Mike Bassett on the postgame show last night. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll talk about that. But let's talk Mavs right here next on DallasOnAir.com.